many of us had, it's almost like a different kind of routine, but some of those that when I heard you say definition, you know, there's some points in our day when it was precedented times that the, that definition meant transitions for us throughout the day. We that's transition right. from the gym that's to right. commuting. That's right. That's great. Transition that's from really commuting to work. And then when we left work, we, co- we commute again. And, and then there was, we transitioned to go out to lunch or we'll go out to lunch with a co- coworker. That's right. Now it feels, when I've had some of these days where there's been none of those transitions, yes. it's honestly felt like the movie Groundhog Day with Bill Murray. Well, that's it's right. It's like and over and over and it's the same song, Sunny and Cher, every morning. I'm, I'm, hitting, <laughs> I'm, hitting the, I'm hitting the clock and I'm like, what day is it? I don't even know what day that's it is. That's right. And that's what people, our clients say all the time. I don't know what day it is, what's a weekend, Who, you know, what does Friday mean from, from Sunday or Monday? What do any days, how do they differentiate from me? Yeah. How do I distinguish? On today's show, uh, I'm really excited. We're going to have a great guest, uh, Catherine Crowley. And what I love about this show is she's going to be talking specifically about the challenges that we're all facing because we're tired. It feels like we've been running a marathon. It feels like we should have already finished here and still we're going into 2021 and we're exhausted. And she's going to talk about some of the challenges of why we're exhausted. So I want you to listen real close. I want you to listen in the segment today. She's going to have two separate sets of three kind of uh, prescriptions on ways we can keep ourselves healthier. Um, Everything from how we have routines to even how we set goals and, and stay connected. So full of rich tips, full of rich guidance. Uh, Listen close. Uh, It's definitely helped me. It's going to help you a bunch. The Workplace Therapist Show is sponsored by the Leadership Foundry, bringing a cutting edge real world approach to leadership development. The Leadership Foundry partners with each client organization to create a custom tailored experience, virtual or in person, that combines innovative leadership content, world-class facilitators, and one-on-one coaching to ensure your leaders have everything they need to grow and thrive. To find out more and to design your one-of-a-kind program, visit MyLeadershipFoundry.com. Catherine, I'm really excited to have you on the show today and thrilled about our, our topic today. So we're going to spend some time today talking about some of the challenges you've seen in this um Still unprecedented world we're calling 2021. I mean, we would love to, six months ago, said 2021 is going to be precedented times. We're all going to get back right. to normal, but we're not. And it's, we still feel like we're kind of running a marathon and, and pretty darn, darn exhausted. So I would love to kind of have some conversation with you on some of the ch- unique challenges that you're seeing from your clients as you're walking in the world and maybe some ways we might be able to um, either treat some of those issues or Maybe in a perfect world, cure some of those issues. I don't know, I don't know if that's even possible. Uh, but before we get started, though, I really want to uh, make sure um, I introduce you properly. So, um, Catherine Crowley is so your Harvard trained psychotherapist and the co author of three business self help books. And by the way, I love the title of your books. <laughs> okay, you. you've got Mean Girls at Work, uh, mm-hmm. Working for You Isn't Working for Me. How many people have said that? Uh, mm-hmm. And the best selling business book, Working with You Is Killing Me. So I think those are fantastic titles, and I would encourage all of my listeners to go out and purchase copies. Um, so you and your business partner, executive coach, uh, Kathy Elster, um, you combined your complementary expertise to offer field-tested techniques for dealing with difficult people and challenging conditions at work, and your company, Q-Squared Enterprises, I'm K-Squared, K-Squared Enterprises, mm-hmm. is located in New York City. Um, welcome. I'm really excited to have you on, you. The, on the show today. Yeah. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here, Brandon. So I'm gonna. Uh, I've been spending enough time talking. I'd like to turn it to you a little bit. Tell us a little sure. bit more f- from your vantage point. What is it that you all do? You do when you're helping work with clients. And tell me a little about your work and then how you got doing that. Yeah. Well, actually, I appreciate you saying you all because the truth is that what I'm in a partnership with Kathy Elster and she and I have combined our expertise. She has a business background, mm-hmm. strategy background. I obviously have a psychological background and. So the part, the thing that's interesting is our story, story begins over 25 years ago when she was running strategy groups. I attended them. We hit it off. And we, when I came back from Harvard, started to work together because she started to realize that the business problems that she was approaching had psychological impact behind them. So for example, if she was helping a whole group, a sales force, learn how to sell, 
she would come up against resistance because people were afraid of rejection. Mm. And she didn't know how to deal with that. So we would talk about some strategies for dealing with the psychological underpinnings of why the sales force wouldn't take the actions that she was prescribing. So we began to work together in many different ways, looking at business problems. I got to learn about how to approach you know, marketing and sales and organizational development. And she got to use my psychological information. And so that's how we came up with our formula, which is basically combining uh, psychological insight with business tactics to address your problems at work. Beautiful. Beautiful. I mean, I, I, I feel like I'm talking to a kindred spirit. <laughs> so fantastic. I mean, I absolutely love that. Um, and, and so much of a passion of mine as, as well. You know, yeah. It wasn't for those darn feelings and emotions. Uh, you know, people that's might, right. people might not be quite so messy, but you know, we're a messy bunch. Us, exactly. Us and that our first book, Working With You Is Killing Me, the whole premise of that is that your job, that's the simplest thing. It's the people that you interact with, right? Whether it's a coworker, a manager, an employee, vendor, or a client, those are the ones who present the challenge. Right, and that's your the second part of your job, or maybe the first part, is dealing with those individuals. Yeah, so you know when I think about like precedent at times, right? It's 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 even the commute to work would have been a challenge because people are so stressed out and they're either yes. elbowing you on the subway or they're cutting you off on the highway, whatever it happens to be. Of course, we have different kinds of stress right now, so maybe that's a mm -hmm. nice segue for us. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about as we're moving into early stages of 2021. Yeah. What, what are you hearing? What are some of the pain points that people are saying, wow, can you help me with this? This is tough. Well, I'll tell you, Brandon, it's an incredible mix. Mm. So um, it, Kathy and I do executive coaching. She does executive coaching. I do therapy. And together we also do workshops and seminars and that kind of thing. And we have a podcast, My Crazy Office. And I reference that because that's where we get questions from people. And the biggest questions are about um, dealing with the isolation, which for introverts is wonderful, for extroverts is horrible. Um, organizing your day, creating structure, having boundaries at work when you're working from home. And then the other thing that's huge is the dual role that so many professionals have to play now where you know, they're parenting and sometimes homeschooling and sometimes you know, schooling other people's children and sometimes dealing with elder care and but it's all happening in one space. And so it you know, becomes this very murky, hard to define. My child runs in screaming as I'm on a conference call or doing a pre business presentation. There, that, that part, I think, is, remains challenging. Now, many families have learned, figured out systems in that way. But that, it's that blend, I think, that is challenging for many people. Yeah, the words you're using makes me think of like a really dysfunctional stew. Right? It's just all like in there, just churning around, and it's kind of all mixed together. Yeah. Oh, boy. So th using that analogy of a stew, there's a lot yes. of things in that stew. Yeah. Um, which one of the ingredients is probably the um, spiciest that is impacting things the most? Which is the ingredient? I think it's the difficulty with defining and structuring one's day. I think that's the, probably oh, the toughest one. Say more about that. Well, so if you go to work, many of the people who are now re working remotely, which by the way, many like, like they don't necessarily want to go back to commuting every day because that in itself is a grind, as you mentioned, sitting in traffic, the worrying, and also being away from home for so many hours in the day. So there is advantage to this, but the, the downside is that the, the routine, we are animals of habit. Mm. And so the routines that people used to have, like maybe you went to the gym and then you drove to work and then or maybe you dropped the kids at school and then you went to work, those routines are disturbed now. Mm. So it's very hard and routines help us focus. They put our brains on a certain track, right? So that we go from one thing to the other. When there's no when there's little definition it's very hard. It affects the clarity of your thinking, the focus, your ability to prioritize, your ability to follow through. It was already hard with the digital age to complete tasks without being distracted with something else. But now with the blend of so many things in our environment, 
it's very challenging to create that definition. Yeah. So when I so I'm hearing you say that, and when I think about some of the, because many of us had, it's almost like a different kind of routine. But some of mm -hmm. those that when I heard you say definition, you know, there's some points in our day when it was precedented times that the that definition meant transitions for us throughout the day. We that's transition right. from the gym that's to right. commuting. That's right. That's great. Transition that's from commuting really to point. work. And then when we left work, we, we commute again. And, and then there was, we transitioned to go out to lunch or we go out to lunch with a co coworker. That's right. Now it feels, when I've had some of these days where there's been none of those transitions, yes. it's honestly felt like the movie Groundhog Day with Bill Murray. Well, that's it's right. It's like and over and over and it's the same song, Sonny and Cher, every morning. I'm, <laughs> I'm, hitting, I'm, hitting the, I'm hitting the clock and I'm like, what day is it? I don't even know what day that's it is. That's right. And that's what people, our clients say all the time. I don't know what day it is, what's a weekend, Who, you know, what does Friday mean from, from Sunday or Monday, what do any days, how do they differentiate for me? Yeah. How do I distinguish? And so, yes, that's such a great point. So I think we're, we now, part of self-management is actually creating new routines, creating some kind of structure, setting boundaries between, you know, when you stop put down the computer or, or put down your phone, um, which we're trying in earlier day, you know, before, when, even if you were commuting, that was still hard. But now that sense of boundaries is more important than ever. So can you think of an example of either a client that you've seen kind of do that well or any tip or trick that you try and provide clients to help them, you know, get a handle on a little better a little better structure, a little better routine, a little more healthier, you know, transitions yes. in the day. I'll give. How about three tips? I, I, I love it. Three is great. I'm not. I'm not going to limit you on on prescriptions. You can prescribe as much as you like. Well, I, what I would say is, you want to find ways to punctuate your day. That's number one. Find ways, and that's. I love that term transition. So now I think a lot of times in terms of punctuating, like okay, it's morning is breakfast, you have a morning routine that doesn't include work, that you know would include breakfast and maybe a little exercise and get, if you have kids, taking care of the kids, getting them ready for school. And when you're done with that routine, literally step outside and breathe or walk or do something that creates just a tiny delineation that's telling you, okay, now I'm transitioning to my work day. So finding ways to punctuate your day. Same could be when you're done with the day. You know, I've got a laptop, so I'm thinking of put down, put down the laptop, <laughs> put down the lid, cover your computer, you know. And again, perhaps step outside or go talk to your child or go sit with your partner if you have a partner or take a run. But do something that says the day, my work day is over. So finding ways to punctuate your day. This, the second thing is to create um, consistency. So I recommend going to bed at the same time, getting up at the same time, starting work if you can at the same time, ending work at a similar time. But that consistency, we need that. It helps us, and especially with sleep, waking mm. and sleeping hours, um, and which I know for a lot of people is really tricky right now because it's tempting to watch to binge on Netflix, you know, when you're trying to sneak some good times after a long blended day. Yeah. And then the third piece, uh, which I guess ties into all these other ones, is just I uh, get out. <laughs> get out, exercise, breathe, take walks, go in nature, see people. But you need, we still need to get out, and because staying in for too long, even if you're an introvert, is just not good for the brain. It makes things too murky, and it, it as you say, it just creates this no beginning, no end. So I'm a big proponent. Uh, I'm a big supporter of getting out. Yeah, I love those three. So we've got punctuate, we've got consistency, and we've got get out. Yes. And what I love about those three is in many ways they're siblings. I mean, they very much That's right. kind of, they connect they're with each other. They're interconnected. There's, there's so much to do because when you get out, it could be part of that consistency of your routine and even a punctuate. You're, you're almost mimicking a, a healthier commute to work by taking a little walk around the block and a healthier yes. commute home, taking a little walk around the block. Even right. though you're starting and ending in the same spot, you know, you're kind of almost, it's, it's, a, it's a way to symbolize that and you're getting maybe a little bit of vitamin D along the way. 
So I, I, I think that's great. I think it's fantastic. Those are great. Excellent. Okay. All right. So in our kind of messy stew that we've got, the big one mm-hmm. there is kind of that that lack of kind of structure, and you gave us some great kind of um, prescriptions around that. Is there anything else in that stew that you would kind of identify and say, yeah, this seems like it's a pain point that's still happening or maybe more elevated in 2021 um, yeah. that, that, that we need to probably think about how we can address it? Yeah, so I'd love to talk a minute for the, um, to the listeners about what happened. So what we've been living with is extended uncertainty. And the thing about uncertainty is that it causes our brains to work differently. Um, at the beginning of the pandemic, we it was you know high alert and everyone very concerned about getting sick and sheltering in place if that's what you had to do in your particular state or city. Um, but then as we go on, we're still living with you know, like when exactly do we get to get back to our life? When do the children get to go back to school? You know, we still don't know how things are going to roll out. So the thing, the reason why I want to bring that up is. The brain on uncertainty works differently. Instead of sitting in the frontal lobe, the executive function of the brain. Is this like, is this like those like, commercials in the '80s? Your brain's on your brain on drugs, and it's like yeah, got yeah, the, yeah. Got <laughs> your the brain frying the, the frying egg. Is this, I wonder <laughs> if it's the same kind of thing. Very similar, exactly. Okay. The brain with certainty goes to its executive functions in the frontal lobe, right? So it's like, uh, this is what I must do today, and here are my plans, and this is where we're going to go on vacation, and this is when we're going to move, or whatever we're going to do. With uncertainty, it goes back in the amygdala to the survival brain. Now mm. it's like, I'm on hyper alert. What's going down? What's bad is happening? I'm, cast- I'm catastrophizing. I'm obsessing. I'm ruminating. I'm having a hard time focusing. So if you think about that condition prolonged, right, it's almost nine months, ten months, it's a year. Yeah. For a year's time, it is very hard to then discipline our brains to go back into executive function and really plan and really focus. So I, this is a long introduction to focus, I think, is it still remains very challenging for a number of people. Yeah, you know, it's almost just, um, I think one of the statements you said in there that's so shocking, it didn't sound shocking when you said it, but to me it was shocking, was this idea that it's so hard for us to basically go into executive function. In other yeah. words, we, we're not going into executive function. People are not functioning with executive function right now. Not the way we used to, no. Which is probably why you see so many little things trigger people, and they just kind of fly off the handle. And they, that's right. And, and you'll see it either in social media or how they behave out in public or whatever happens to be. It's like, wow, that seems really a strong reaction for something pretty minor. But yeah, because we feel a little bit like trapped animals. You know, we don't know when we're going to be released back to constructing some form of a new normal. Okay. And so, so it's very hard to plan. That's, executive function is basically prioritizing, planning, laying out, you know, where we head it. So, and I will say that people, I think we're getting, we're, everyone's trying to get back to that, Brandon. It's not like it's not happening at all, but it's just, it's very challenging. So this is the million dollar, maybe billion dollar question. Okay. Yeah. So are, are you ready? Maybe even trillion dollar question. <laughs> what can we do to make that um, shift in our brains smoother? And what yeah. can we do to block out the stuff that is keeping us in that state of, um, feeling trapped, fearful, you know, right. a little on edge. So what, what, what are some antidotes or prescriptions? Great. Okay. So uh, I'm going to do three things again. Great. <laughs> the first is to you want to be kind to your brain, and so you want to help it clear, help it clear out the cobwebs, clear out the fear, so that it can function better. And so the ways that I understand we can do that are by practices, whether it's meditation or exercise, or if you love to play music, playing, going back to playing that instrument or painting, doing something that allows the brain to work in a more constructive, creative fashion and that clears out all the worry and obsession and that kind of thing. So do something to help your brain clear. 
And I also, in that, the items you gave as examples, feel like all those have endorphin releases in them. Exactly. Which, which is, Thank you. Which is like really important because it's like a, health, a healthy version of com combating anxiety. That's right. And they also all involve a certain degree of movement. Yeah. It, yeah. It's important to, I always like to say that emotion is energy in motion. So if you want to clear out some stinky, toxic emotions, you've got to get busy. you got to move. Well, that's, that's, that's a mic drop phrase. i got to say that again. So you said emotion is e energy in motion. In motion. You, I love that. That's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And, unless it's not. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, words, that's fair. If we, if we clog it, our tendency is to, like, do trash compactor, you know, feelings come up, we want to shove them down. That's okay. That's also part of survival. But to get emotion moving, it's best to think of it as energy in motion. If I move, it will clear. Great. So that's one. The second thing is to set micro goals. If you can't do long range planning, do short range planning. You know, set goals for your home, for your workplace, for your whatever the assignments are that you're working on at this moment. You may have a short range exercise goal that could help you, or short range nutrition goal that helps you. But do some micro goal setting that's short term and a manageable that will help you to feel a greater sense of control. Okay, so let me um, ask you on that. So I was immediately thinking in my head. I think about exercise, it could be two kinds of goals. One is more like um, a behavior I can control, like I want to exercise yeah. three times this week. Yeah. Another is um, I want to lose part of my COVID-15. So that, that's a harder thing to do because that's more of an outcome. If, yeah. Do you have a preference? Is it better to do pick a behavior or, or outcome? Well, I, don't, I think you can pick an outcome and then attach a behavior to it. So if you wanted to lose part of your COVID-15, and you'd like to start exercising three times a week towards that goal, and you know, in an effort to accomplish that goal, that's fine. That's great. Yeah. Okay, so it could be both. That's great. Okay, so we've got the, the helping your brain clear, and then setting these micro goals. And the third thing I think is to stay connected. Mm. So, um, and uh, again, I, I keep referring to extroverts, introverts, but we all need a certain amount of connection. So if you can have, if there's a work buddy who you could have regular contact with, maybe an action partner, you know, if you're having trouble focusing and you, it helps you to call another person or email another person, say, these are the, my priorities today. Other people help us get organized. And so, and they can create accountability too. Like mm. you're like, oh my God, I keep not doing this thing. Can I tell? Can I bookend that with you? Can I, you know, text you when I've finished doing it? So bring other people into the mix to help you focus, to help you have accountability, and to give you energy. Because that's the other thing that we're mm. missing with remote working is the energy of colleagues and collaborators. Again, three wonderful examples. We've got that kind of clear our mind with kind of that. Um, um, you know, emotions being energy in motion, love that. We've got micro goals, and we've got get connected. And again, siblings, there are many ways, so interconnected. Yeah. Uh, love, love those as, as kind of great examples of how we can kind of move forward. All right, Catherine, so here's my last question for you today. Yes. So um, one day, I don't know when that day is going to be, but it's, I know it's going to come. We'll, we'll get to something we would call precedented times. I have no idea what that's going to look like, but we're going to get there. Yes. Um, so tell me, and when you look into your crystal ball, what do you think the working world is going to look like? Um, and what are some of the likely challenges we're still going to be facing that we're going to need to continue to practice some of these great um, tips and habits you've provided us? Yeah. That's a great question. I mean, I think the one word that I can use is hybrid. I think that we're not going to go back to strictly going to the office nine to five or whatever the hours are, you know, constantly commuting, um, and we're not going to be totally remote. We, it's going to be a hybrid thing, I think. Yeah. You'll probably flex schedules and rotating teams and that kind of thing. So um, 
That's one. That's it. That's what I would say. Some mm. form of hybrid. The other piece, though, I think with the challenge that's always true when you're remote, and it's true in any, even when people are showing up to the office, is to have a sense of connection, of communication, of consistency. Mm. And so, because I think that's the problem. I mean, the other thing that I've noticed is that our clients, you know, the lack of like we can't see each other and just after a meeting go say, how did you think that was? Or, oh boy, you know, I think we did a good job here, but not so great there. There's, we don't have the, what do they call the water cooler conversations anymore. And the problem with that is that then often our minds make the worst interpretation. You know, like I saw so-and-so looking at me or they turned off their camera. What did that mean? You know, that kind of thing. Uh, and so... I think the being able to form systems of communicating and clarifying, you know, what's going on, what are the expectations, who's doing their job, who is not, that's going to be a big challenge going forward. Yeah, when I heard you say that, I immediately thought, you know, it's so easy to create an office culture because so much of it's just like it's in the air. It's like the yeah. pheromones. You know, I'm reading your emotions, I'm reading, I'm watching you, I'm watching that's how right. you're doing stuff, and I map you and it's hard, it's, it's, it, it, and we don't have to articulate it because it's kind of modeled by everybody. That's um, right. Um, but if we don't have that as much, then you're going to have to really make it a system, articulate it, clarify it, just kind of like what you're saying. Um, right, the culture. You have to keep fostering. If you want a certain kind of work culture, you're, we're going to have to work much harder at fostering it. Yeah, yeah. And I had a guest on um, a few weeks ago, and they talked about kind of, What's kind of missing, in, and you mentioned kind of the water cooler. It's almost like the water cooler emotions. Like I can't yeah. after the meeting, I can't tell. Some are people excited, That's frustrated, because right. we just go goodbye and we leave the meeting. And then, That's right. <laughs> like, and then if you hear nothing, you know, for most of us, myself included, I'm plenty insecure. The the story is like, oh my god, yeah. they didn't like we, it. I screwed up. We, we, I'm going to hear about this. We regularly preach on this show that in absence of communication, people almost always assume the worst. That's right. So, you know, you don't have all that stuff. You're gonna, you're gonna, and then now your mind's working on these, again, survival things. It feels like uncertainty, which then goes back into what we've been talking, about, right. talking about today. Yes. Uh, well, this has been absolutely fantastic. I am so thrilled to have, have um, not only met you, but have you on the show to share your wisdom and guidance. So I ask all my guests this question when we get towards the end. Uh, yes. What is one life hack you might have for us? Um, a little simple tip or, or trick on how we can improve either our conversations um, or relationships, mm -hmm. either at work or at home. So I'm going to say something that uh, people may not like, <laughs> but I'll just say it. Um, one of my favorite terms is strike when the iron is cool. Hmm. So in other words, and in these times, I think it's particularly challenging to kind of pull back if someone says or does something, even if it's text or email that rubs us the wrong way. It can be very hard not to just quickly respond in a defensive manner or just to get ticked off even if they can't see you, you know, and assume the worst. And so I just like the idea of pulling back and really assessing the situation and then coming, if there's something you need to say or someone you need to address, to do it, even if you're angry, you can use your anger for protection, but it needs to be cool anger, right? So yeah. you can approach the situation or the person when you're calm, when you're cooled down in a way that's professional, not personal. I love that so incredibly much, and it's... Um somewhat raw for me right now because I've been working with a team this week that's been having some real challenges. And mm -hmm. one of the things I gave them, very tactical because they, they're having some real issues with emotion getting in the way. I said, yeah. I said, team, no, no more emails. You can't, no more emailing each other because they're just blasting each other over, over right. emails. And then I left the meeting and within six hours, somebody sent an email and another one started blasting each other on it. They couldn't, they couldn't stop. They and, couldn't and, stop themselves. They exactly. couldn't stop themselves. And, at the end, and because of what you, we've already talked about today, and you pointed out so well that we're already on edge, yeah. that all those little things are just taken into even more uh, extreme. So I love this idea of strike when the iron's cool. Give, right. give yourself some grace and patience. Get, practice a 24-hour rule to just you right. know, let, let some of that um, 
muck that's gotten stirred up just kind of settle down and then you can you can operate a little more clearly and rationally. I think that's, that's right. And yeah, I love we had um Kathy and I love to call those kind of emails e missiles. So you know you can <laughs> Amen. Why is, were they ever? Let me tell you. Draft your e missile and hold it for twenty four hours before you send it. Yeah. Mm, mm. I like that. Uh, well this is an absolute you're an absolute gift. Thank you so much for coming on today. So if people want to learn more about you, listen to your podcast, get a copy of your books. Um, where can they go? Well, thank you for asking. They can go to our website, ksquaredenterprises.com. We have uh, on that, you will find our books. You'll find our podcast, My Crazy Office. We welcome, Brandon, by the way, any questions. Uh, people want to submit a question or a situation at work that they're grappling with. Please send it to us. We will change the, you know, characteristics so you can't be recognized, and we will address it on our show. So that's one thing. And uh, yeah, that's. I think so, the so, website has the information. So if somebody sees something on there from a B Smith, I'm just telling them right now, it's not me. <laughs> just, just, just so you know, <laughs> may sound something like I would send in, but it's not, <laughs> not me. Okay. Good. Uh, Catherine, this is great. Well, um, I look forward to staying connected and, and following you and uh, keeping up with all the good work you're doing. And I really appreciate you coming on the show. And here is to a great 2021. Wasn't that a great show? I really took away a lot of points from our conversation, my conversation with Catherine. And some things that I would want to summarize for you today. So in her first set of three steps, those first three siblings that she gave us, she said, you want to help kind of, and she's thinking about kind of how we structure our day because that was part of our issues, right? When we're working from home. And this is going to be true as we move into a hybrid world. So don't think it's just now. She said, punctuate your day. So make those smoother transitions in and out of different parts of your day. Um, consistency in your day, particularly with sleep. She mentioned that. And she said, get out, get, get, get out and get moving, walk around, get some vitamin D. So she said those three, really, really important. And then in terms of our mental health um, and keeping things kind of um, a little more clear, uh, I love this idea that she had, boy, I'm going to steal it. It's so fantastic. She said, emotions are energy in motion. And I think that is so true. And we've got to keep that clear. So she said, be kind to your brain, kind of make sure we're kind of being aware and, uh, of what's kind of coming in there. Um, set micro goals so we can see some progress along the way and stay connected, stay connected with our friends and family and people that are close to us so we can feel that energy. I would add one more tip around that. If you can help it, don't watch the news, folks. Doesn't matter what kind of news you're watching, it's all bad. It's not gonna help you do any of the things that Catherine talked about here today. It's only gonna send us back into that place of fear and uncertainty because it doesn't matter what news channel you put on, that's what they're using to get to us. Uh, and it works because that's what we're worried about right now. So they're telling us there's a monster around the corner and, and we're looking out for that. So I'm putting these, these tips in place for me. I hope you do too. Uh, and I can't wait to our next show. This week, we're sending a thank you out to Jeff Perlman, who wrote a very nice review of the hot sauce principle in Amazon for Brandon. And it says the right advice at the right time. The Hot Sauce Principle is a perfectly timed book for professionals who feel like they are consistently fighting deadlines from all directions. Brandon Smith delivers candid, highly reliable advice that he has both personally developed and curated from his work with high power executives under eternal pressure to deliver results. If you're someone who feels the wrath of the never ending work stream with compressed timelines, I encourage you to check out this book for a welcome reprieve from the heat. Thank you so much, Jeff. And if you want to be featured on the Workplace Therapist Show, don't forget to follow the Workplace Therapist across social media, as well as like, comment, and rate this podcast. That's how we'll grow our tribe. Thanks so much.